Tifa, do you have any cavities? Let's take a look. Let's just open this. Let's take a look in there. Let's see what it's looking. Actually, it would be simpler if I took the jaw and just opened the jaw, right? There we go. Let's take a look in there. See what's going on. Ooh. No, I don't see any cavities. No cavities in there. At least not on the bottom. What about the top? Let's see if we can... Uh, I think we need a flashlight in here, though. This isn't going to be enough. Let's add a light. Okay. All right, that's better. Let's see. Nope. No cavities. And on that happy note, I think it's time we head back to the bar. Come on. This is a breakdown of Tifa Lockhart's character model from Final Fantasy VII Remake. This is going to be so much fun. You'll see. Yeah. Maybe. My name's Laura Gallagher, and this is Our Gang a channel where we talk about anything related to character art. This particular character model breakdown has been highly requested by you. So thanks for sending in all of your requests, first of all. But also, how about we do a little trade here? I will trade you this particular Tifa Lockhart model breakdown video in exchange for both a like and a subscription to the channel here if you are new. And if you don't give me any of these two things, in the future I will have to resort to making character model breakdowns of SpongeBob SquarePants models. <laughs> you don't want to see that. Before we begin, I simply want to say that Tifa Lockhart's model belongs to Square. Enix. We won't talk about where you can acquire that particular data, but all I will say is that Google holds the answers to many questions in life. Let's get started. Tifa really takes good care of her skin, right? Take a look at that. That skin is so nice, so high res. Wow, face looks so gorgeous. In fact, when you zoom in here, look at how crazy high res all of this data is actually. It's gotta be a trick. Now, for those who wonder, the texture that is applied on her face is actually just a 248 texture. But all of this data here, all this crazy high-risk data actually comes from the fact that we have a tiling detail map applied on top uh, that is uh, right now tiling about uh, 24 times over the face. And uh, you can see the result of tiling that particular detail map and blending that with the base normal map. In fact, if I go here and I play with the tiling value, you can see what's kind of happening here. And if I get rid of it completely, now we're actually looking at the base normal map of the face without any detail map that is applied. But that's a very common technique used in video game to simply uh, on surfaces to make them look a little bit more high res uh, is to uh, overlay on top of the unique textures that is used over a surface like in the head in this particular case. Uh, a detail map of some kind that is usually a pretty small texture it can be a 512 sometimes a 1024 but 512 is usually uh, good enough for these uh, that uh, tiles many times and really contains a lot of very, very tiny details, uh, as you can see. And that tiles and that blends with the base texture that we have to give the impression that the surface is actually uh, more high res than it winds up really being in the end. You can actually kind of tell because there's no detail map right now that's applied on the lips. So the lips actually look a little bit uh, lower resolution than the rest. But because it's lips and we're kind of more or less expecting that zone of the face to be more or less uh, smooth, uh, then it's not really bothersome uh, at a regular distance uh, at which we would look at the character. The head is actually separated from the rest of the body, but you wouldn't actually be able to tell because the texture looks like it is continuous. But not just the texture, the surface normals also have to be tweaked so that we can blend the head with the body and have a seamless transition between these two points there. And take a look at this, right? You can't actually see the place here when you look at the 3D model, you can't actually see the place where the head actually transitions within the body there. That particular transition has uh, been erased uh, because they have tweaked the normals and they have averaged the normals between the head and the body to make sure that you couldn't actually see that transition there between those two meshes. So I actually talk about that uh, in one of our previous videos. But if you don't believe me, uh, these two things are actually separate. See here, I can actually take the head and I can actually move it around. And uh, we can see that there is actually a gap here that starts to form between the head and the body there. That's nightmare fuel right there. So that concept of detail maps that are uh, tiling over a surface to make it look more high res is actually used in a lot of different places over this uh, particular uh, character. If I'm zooming here around the skirt, in fact, you can kind of tell like all the different types of letters that she has. You know, she's got like some type of letter here that looks like 
a little bit of like uh, some type of lizard skin here a little bit. There's uh, other leather here that looks more like just standard, I suppose, cow leather. We can definitely tell that uh, Tifa is not vegan. All of those details, you know, it looks super, super high res, right? So all of that comes from those detail maps. In fact, if I go here and I select the material that is applied, you'll be able to really tell here. So there is here too, uh, over the surface of the skirt here, you can see that there is also a leather detail map that is here and that is also tiling many, many times. Right now, I've set it to about uh, 20. And if I get rid of the detail map completely, you can see now the surface and you can see the pixelation that is within the surface there. So that's really what detail map do and this is a very common uh, technique that we use within video games. You can actually kind of see uh, uh, as well how the roughness value, you know, like this part here, this kind of leathery part here is kind of, you can see that it's a bit glossier, you know, it's not quite as rough as uh, the flaps here or uh, the pleats rather that she has over her skirt there. So they're also varying the roughness in different places to really communicate the impression that there are different leathers, you know. And if we take a look at the socks here, you can see how way, way rougher the surface actually is in relation to what is happening over the skirt, right? So there's this really beautiful attention to the roughness values that you have everywhere over the character to really communicate different types of material. Even if in the end, everything winds up having uh, the same albedo value, the same level of black. This is actually something that uh, Frédéric Bennett over at Eidos Montreal had actually taught me when I was working there. Uh, it's... Uh, you know, what I like to call now the Darth Vader effect, right? If you take a look at Darth Vader, he's wearing black everywhere, but you can actually tell apart the different materials that he has based upon the roughness of that particular material, you know? Um, even if you have the same albedo value, you can easily communicate the impression of different materials just by playing around with the roughness value that that particular material will uh, actually have. By the way, does anyone know what logo this is i feel as if uh maybe some uh really big final fantasy 7 fans here would maybe know that if this actually represents a particular in-game logo i don't actually know i'm kind of curious to know if this is like a bit of an easter egg that is sort of uh, over the surface there by the way look at how crazy high res all of these details are uh, that she has over these gloves right like you can see like little wires here and stuff this is like super crazy detail this is probably so that these can be used in like cinematic shots uh and stuff like that who knew that she has this little tiny little bomb that is here uh, as a little Easter egg. Um, and in fact, if you're kind of wondering like, yeah, so what's happening on the other side? Is there something else? Actually, yeah. Look at that cute little tiny chocobo she's got there. It's so, it's so like super cute. So like she has these little Easter eggs over her and those are super cute. I really love that they have added those uh, on, the, on the 3D model. As you can see, those, uh, those sort of uh, bracelets, uh, I suppose, uh, or those little chains that she has around her wrists there, uh, they're actually just uh, an alpha that is applied on a polygon plane. And uh, it's as simple as that. So that's not actual 3D geometry. Uh, and it kind of makes sense, right? Because if you wanted to do something like this using 3D geometry, this would be crazy high res. This would like eat through your polygon budget. Really, really, really crazy. But you know, you want to do something like this, you just put a strip of uh, polygon. On top of that, you have a repeating texture of some kind. Uh, we can actually take a look at the texture here. So here's the texture. This is the texture that's actually used uh, over uh, the whole glove. So there is uh, a texture only for the gloves themselves, which is really, really important because uh, you want to be able to swap the gloves in game, right? So depending on the glove that she has, you want to be able to swap the model out. So because of that, they have separated the gloves as a separate texture, which is uh, really, really, really great. But uh, as you can see in here, we actually have an alpha that is uh, used here. Uh, and so here is the chain that is uh, used over her wrists there. So really, really cool, but also very, very optimized. And that's wonderful. If you take a look here, like let's say around, uh, whatever the name of this is, uh, I don't actually know, but you can kind of tell that there's different metallic pieces that all have kind of different material properties, you know? Like you have this piece here that looks like it's sand casted. Uh, just based on the surface texture that is kind of left, you know, because when you sand cast something, that sort of sand texture stays embedded within the metallic object that you have just casted there. And we can kind of see that here. And that's really, really cool. Um, and then you have like other things that look like they're sort of made of uh, metal that is exposed under paint, you know. And so there's this really beautiful attention to detail and really communicating different types of materials 
through the surface details that we have pretty much ever over the character. And that's really, really, really beautiful. Take a look here at like that super high res uh, textile texture that we have here. Now, uh, that too, I believe, is a uh, detail map that is applied here. If I just select uh, the material, we can actually take a look at that. And yeah, you can see there's actually a fabric uh, tiling detail here that is applied, which is a 256 texture, actually. So it's really, really small. Uh, but since it tiles many, many times right now, it's tiling over like 20 times. Uh, it's really giving you that impression that the surface winds up being very, very high res. You know, here I can play with the uh, tiling, as you can see. Uh, and so once again, this is a, a really common technique that we use, but it's, apl it's, uh, it's applied and it's used here to uh, really vary the surface details that we have everywhere over the character. And it's really, really beautiful. Look at all those scratches here. Those look like they're, they've almost been purposefully placed like this. You know, like this isn't just a dumb repeating uh, texture there, but there's part of it that just a little bit scratched more than the rest of the clip that's here. So that's really, really, really awesome that they've paid such a great attention to details like that. For those who are wondering about textile density, what that actually looks like, we can see here uh, I have applied a checkerboard over the whole character, so we can actually see uh, what is the density or the relative density of textiles that we have pretty much everywhere over the character there. By the way, this, this particular texture that I'm using right now, uh, it's really useful because it actually tells me not only uh, if there is stretching over the surface, but because there are letters uh, and there are numbers in there, it also helps me to see what is the direction of the surface, you know? Because if you're using a basic checkerboard, you may not uh, be able to tell if a surface has been mirrored or if it has been flipped 90 degrees on the side the way that we have here. But it's actually very, very useful to know that once you are texturing, what is the directionality of the surface there? So that's what the checkerboard gives me. And shameless plug, okay, super shameless because uh, it's actually subscribers on outgang.studio that really allow me to create these kind of videos. If you want to have access to this checkerboard texture, it's actually available in the handouts for Outgang members. And uh, that also includes uh, over 100 hours of character art classes, if that is something that you want to learn there. So yeah, we can actually see how um, the textual density kind of varies over the whole surface. And it's kind of interesting, right? Because uh, different parts of her outfit really has a different textual density. In fact, things like the clips here, like the clips that we had talked about and where I was actually saying how they have all these crazy, nice, uh, super high-res scratches there that are very, very interesting. Uh, you can see that this particular clip is actually more dense in terms of texels than the rest of the outfit there. Um, and it makes sense in a way, right, to kind of lower the texel density that they would have, let's say, over the skirt or like the places where they uh, actually use a lot of cloth. It kind of makes sense in those places there to lower the textile density because in those places they're actually using those detail maps that we have talked about right uh, you know this these detail maps actually make up for the lower textile density that we have in different places um but places like those uh those belt buckles and stuff they couldn't really easily use detail maps to create those scratches there so they figured okay since we have to have a unique uh, texture to create those scratches there. It's important for us that we have a higher textile density there. So that's really, really cool that they have done that. They've really thought through, okay, uh, where should we maximize the textile density? Here again, we can see how crazy high res the face is in relation to the rest of the body, right? As we're looking at a textile density there, there's this very, very, very clear break that happens uh, once we uh, move off of the uh, torso and into the head proper there, to the head geometry there. Just look at how crazy insane high res the textile density is for the face in relation to the rest of the body there, right? And if you thought the body was high res, and if you thought that the face was high res, right? Take a look at the crazy te textile density that we have over the eyes, you know? They've really made this so, so that the eyes have the highest textile density of the whole character. That's really, really crazy. And just like for the face, take a look at the gloves, right? Take a look at how crazy high res the gloves are. Probably other circumstances in which you can see the gloves from really, really close up. Let's take a look at the face and see what's going on there. So first of all, we have eyelashes that are modeled out. Uh, so that's the same thing that we saw on Cloud. We can see that they have used uh, actual geometry for these uh, as opposed to hair cards. Uh, so that's really, really cool. 
For the eyes themselves, uh, I actually had to do a bit of manual work myself because, uh, of course, I don't have access to the crazy shaders that they have in game to make their eyes look uh, wonderful the way that they are. So I had to do a bit of manual work myself here to make sure that I could bring the eyes of uh, Tifa to be uh, as close as possible to the in-game model that they have. And uh, some other work that I had done actually was to try and make the iris actually look a little bit concave. Uh, as you can see, if you take a look at where the specular highlight is right now, uh, it's kind of here over the uh, cornea for her, uh, what is her left eye here. But you can see that the part of the iris that is actually lit right now is on the inside here. So on the inside of her left eye, that's the part here that is actually lit up and as i rotate the light around you, you can see this will actually kind of switch around so now that the light uh you can see it's kind of hitting the inside of her cornea there you can see that the part of the of the eye that is lit right now is on the outside so uh that's actually something that's uh really really cool and really wonderful when we can really capture that on 3d models um and unfortunately the data that they had uh, or that i had access to to begin with uh really didn't have that particular effect in there so it kind of uh it, so it actually kind of looked a little bit like this so the data it kind of looked a little bit like this when i got it here so once again that's because i simply don't have access to the shaders that they have but take a look at her eyes now this is actually uh if we just uh simply plug in uh tifa's eye textures over the model in the marmoset, set it actually kind of looks like this you know so it looks like she's wearing sort of contact lenses Am I the only one who gets bothered by this, by the way? When I watch, like, uh, especially when I watch, like, TV shows or something and they don't quite have the budget or the capacity to uh, make colored eyes uh, actually uh, have that slight concavity the way that we have talked about it before. You know, you can always kind of tell that some characters, sometimes they're just wearing contact lenses on set and they've kind of have kept that in there. Uh, and am I the only one who gets bothered by this, by the way? Because sometimes I just can't see anything else when I watch TV shows. Geralt, I'm talking about you right here. So what I have done to address that is that I have actually added both a displacement map to the eyes to really push the irises inward. Uh, as you can see, as I turn this on, right, you can see the kind of effect that that actually gives us. Uh, you can see that now we wind up having irises that are a little bit concave. So take a look at this from like profile. So I've done that first of all. And uh, we can actually play with the scale here to see the kind of effect, the kind of effect that it, that does. It's probably what's happening to her when she sees a uh, cloud somewhere. She's like, "Cloud, baby, here I am." You weren't thinking of leaving Midgar anytime soon, were you? Can actually push this the other way. Actually, that kind of reminds me of a movie. I'm not sure which one again. Take a look at the hair, by the way. The hair is so wonderful. They've done such a fantastic job. Square, you need to teach me how to do hair, please. I really need to learn all of your secrets there because every haircut that comes out of that studio is so incredibly wonderful. You can even see like little wispy hairs that they have added, right? Like sort of little flyaways that are kind of going in different, uh, in a direction that is different than the rest of the, of the hair. Uh, that it's kind of following there. So it's really, really cool how they have added all these little wispy hairs pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's really, really wonderful. And if we take a look at the wireframe, you can actually see how these, these wispy hairs that they have added, um, there's actually like, like three or four of those for a whole polygon strip, you know? So they have this, this huge polygon strip or like all these different polygon strips that they have going on everywhere around the head. And on some of these, you can see that all that they have is like three or four individual hairs that is following those polygon strips. That's how they create all these uh, wonderful little uh, flyaway hairs that we have over her head. That's really, really wonderful. I'm sure some of you have been wondering playing the game, what's happening under her skirt there, eh? Come on, I'm sure you've been wondering about that. So in this case, we can actually, can actually kind of, uh, oh, here we go. Oh, okay. I see what's going on there. Do you really thought I was going to show that on the stream? Come on, you pervert. I will admit, one thing I was actually wondering about Tifa when I was uh, playing the game was uh, whether they were using some real-time cloth simulation over the skirt or if they were using something else here. And looking at the 3D model, that actually becomes very apparent to us that they're actually not using uh, any type of real-time cloth simulation when it comes to her skirt. And uh, because we can see here all of the different bones that uh, is over the skirt here. And, and if we move those bones around, you can see that it's actually pulling over the skirt there. So 
there's some type of bait animation that they are using uh, to control the movement and the dynamics of the skirt in real time, uh, as opposed to um, use some type of real time cloth simulation. And it makes a lot of sense, okay, because uh, actually using real time cloth simulation for this uh, would actually be kind of problematic because uh, unfortunately real time cloth is actually really, really hard to control, okay? And real time cloth has a tendency to bug out and uh, sort of uh, sometimes even just, just completely go through the body and appear on the other side. Because, uh, you know, the thing about uh, characters within video games, right, is that they are often moving on the screen. So sometimes when they're even off of the camera uh, or off camera, they're sometimes uh, teleporting around the screen in different uh, circumstances. And what happens is that sometimes the cloth, it just uh, uh, doesn't move fast enough to update itself. Uh, and uh, it just, it does happen that when a character moves so quickly, sometimes uh, the cloth will literally go through the character and appear on the other side. You need to see this for yourself. And uh, so if you imagine that they had used real-time cloth here for the skirt, imagine what would happen, the kind of bug and uh, the, the kind of screenshots that would be floating around the web. That wouldn't be very nice. So uh, it makes total sense that they have decided to uh, instead simply use bone animation to control all these different elements that she has around her skirt and certainly the skirt itself as well. By the way, take a look at this. Tifa's model has 165. In, in fact, even more than that, we're up to here, 200,000 triangles for her in-game model. That's a crazy amount, right? Like, that's actually more than Cloud. Uh, as you can see, we actually have 90,000 triangles just for the hair. Uh, it's actually 45,000 triangles, but the hair is double-sided. Uh, so you have to uh, double that uh, because that's what happens in real time. One thing, too, that we can really pay attention to when you're looking at the low-res here is the fact that uh, we have all these uh, loops that are converging here within the armpit. So there's all these loops that are going around the arm itself, uh, and uh, there's a, a very high concentration of circumferential loops that are within the armpit itself, you know? And that's really, really great, you know? Like, we have these much bigger polygons here and pretty much everywhere else, you know? And that makes a ton of sense, right? Because you want to have enough geometry here so that as you raise the arm itself, those extra polygons can actually kind of stretch a little bit. Uh, and, you know, certainly since she does quite a lot of moves in game, it's really, really good to have that in there, you know, so that you have enough geometry so that you can properly raise the arm itself. And all of these extra loops that are all concentrated within the armpit will all stretch uh, and that will stop it so that when the arms are raised, uh, it's going to stop the zone from looking uh, just very blocky and very low res there. So that's really, really cool that they have done that. But another thing we can see is the liberal use of uh, triangles over the mesh in different places. Uh, although this mesh is kind of triangulated right now, of course, uh, I can actually go in here and I can uh, remove what looks like the diagonals uh, over the mesh uh, that are baked in because of the video card. And so if, if I go in here and actually remove a bunch of these diagonals here, what we're left with is, is pretty much essentially just the uh, the quads that they have started with. Uh, in this case here, I'm not completely sure which one should I I should be removing, but I think it would probably look kind of something like this, looking at this. Take a look at all these uh, triangles that are left over the surface, right? And it makes sense, right? Because they really needed to have uh, a little bit of extra geometry here to support those kind of big folds that are over the shirt, but I didn't want to uh, take the time or bother to go in there and try to quad everything after the fact because it's kind of not necessary to do that, and triangles can deform just as well as quads can when they're actually placed properly over the surface. Uh, and so this is yet another example of uh, triangles that are used in games over characters uh, to a very, very good and very optimized effect there. So uh, that's kind of uh, in line with that video that I have recorded over uh, the fact that I think that in some cases, quads and Edge loops are overrated, so if you haven't checked that one out, go and check it out. Now, some of you have reminded me that that video is a little incendiary and exaggerates things a little bit too much, and I know, you're right, but seriously, what are you expecting out of a video that is using Kefka as the thumbnail? Another thing I want to bring your attention to, this is something we don't 
actually kind of intuitively think about sometimes, but this character is actually very demanding from a texturing standpoint in the sense that, uh, or uh, as far as the values are concerned over the whole character, because um, not only does Tifa both have a white tank top, but she has a lot of black uh, over her character as well. Uh, so she has like pretty much the highest amount of contrast you could have in terms of materials or in terms of of albedo there right she has white here and she has black everywhere else so from a texturing standpoint that's actually a pretty big challenge because you have to make sure that all of those uh that the white isn't so bright that uh the lighting just completely washes it out but you have to make sure that the black isn't so dark that uh it also is uh pretty much invisible uh or just too black uh as you are let's say, properly lighting uh, the whites that are used over the character. So um, sometimes you do see people like who don't actually think about this. Now, this is like PBR texturing 101, but uh, you do see sometimes people who will like make a white shirt completely white within their textures, like, like RGB 255. And then that's really, really, really hard to light afterward because it's just so bright that you can't actually uh, light it properly without it being completely blown out there. But they have really gone here and they have really respected, you know, what we call PBR rules when it comes to creating albedos for a uh, for a, a character. And if we sample here the white that they're using here, you can see that the white that they're using uh, is actually like around 225, which is, uh, I believe it's around 90%, right? That's that's about 90%. So the brightest part of the character is, is, is about 90% bright, if you kind of really think about it. And the darkest part of the character is uh, here about uh, 40 out of uh, 255 RGB. So that's about 15%, right, um, I think. So um, yeah, it makes it so that they're not using pure blacks and they're not using pure whites uh, anywhere over the character. And that makes it so that you can light this character afterward and have both the dark parts of the character and have the bright parts of the character all kind of more or less uh, look equally good uh, within a typical lighting scenario. Thanks again for everything. Sleep tight. So that's our Tifa model breakdown video. Let me know in the comments section below what model you would like to see me break down next and I'll go ahead and do that. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here. And if you haven't seen the cloud model breakdown I have posted a few weeks ago, I'm going to leave a link to it uh, right here once I'm done with the whole video editing thing. It should appear there in a nice little box. So that's it, everyone. Until next time, take care.